Father, we know that your spirit does the work. Your spirit produces the fruit. We continue to pray that your spirit will teach us and transform us into the image of Christ as we open your word together. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, ushers. This is part eight of our current series entitled The Mysteries of the Bible. We are working our way through what is known as the mystery doctrines or the mystery teachings in the New Testament. We have talked about the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, the mysteries of God, the mystery of glorification, the mystery of God's will, the mystery of Christ, the fellowship of the mystery. Last week we talked about the great mystery and now today we want to consider the mystery of the gospel. The mystery of the gospel. Ephesians chapter 6 verses 19 and 20. In the English standard translation it reads and also for me that words may be given to me in opening my mouth boldly to proclaim, here it is, the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains, that I may declare it boldly as I ought to speak. For emphasis, I've uh, included the New Living Translation. It reads in this way. And pray for me too. Ask God to give me the right words so I can boldly explain God's mysterious plan that the good news is for Jews and Gentiles alike. I am in chains now, still preaching this message as God's ambassador. So pray that I will keep on speaking boldly for him as I should. The mystery of the gospel is the good news. Isn't it good news? It's called a mystery again because it was concealed in the Old Testament but it is revealed in the church age the message of the gospel, the, the fact that it is good news for the Jews who were God's chosen people and also for the Gentiles who were outsiders, outcasts. Uh, the mystery of the gospel has to do with the fact that the good news of the gospel is for people you like and it's for people you might not like. <laughs> Do I have a church? Yes, the good news is also for people who give you problems. Listen, God desires that everybody be saved. And you won't be able to pick and choose 
who your neighbors are in heaven. You ever, you ever think about it? You know that. You know that there won't be any homeowners associations. <laughs> In heaven, you know. The good news has to be proclaimed because everybody hasn't heard it. And then some who have heard it have not believed it. And so the apostle, listen, he asked for prayer because, and I can identify with this, uh, you know, because I, uh, I sit downstairs every Sunday morning praying, you know, uh, leading up to walking up here and 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 uh, saying uh, the prayer before the sermon. Why? Because it's so easy to mess up this good news. <laughs> it's how so? Whenever, whenever you put your spin on it. You know, uh, if you put your spin on it, the good news could become fake news. If you you start putting a spin on it, are, are you with me? And and so it's it's critical. And, 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 and Paul knew this and so he asked for the church to pray for him that whenever he was explaining now, now he didn't say he was hooping the good news but he said if you look at the text he said I want to explain boldly this mysterious plan of God's I want to declare it with clarity. I want to be succinct. I want to be precise. As a master surgeon, I want to go in and open it up. And so, uh, there's so much in the Bible you may say, well, what are the essentials of the good news? And so uh, I thought uh, we'd all try to get on the same page uh, because the good news has essentials. That there are essential elements to it. Now, uh, first is his virgin birth because the good news is in the, isn't it about Jesus. Amen. You you, you 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 know you might say Reverend Jacobs is coming back, and 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 one or two people might clap. But if you say Jesus coming back, I mean the church ought to get on fire. We can't ever become so uh, common and, and 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 take him for granted. Jesus is coming back. Oh yeah, he coming. Yeah. Sure he is, sure, yeah, yeah, uh, hoorah. No, 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 no. There must always be an expectation with, with passion that he's coming back. And so so, so the, the, the first essential of this good news is his virgin birth. Why is that critical? Because of his virgin birth, he came into the world as a human being without a sin nature. He came into the world, watch this, everybody else, all of us came into the world after Adam, like Adam, with a sin nature. That's why we do stuff. I just put it like that, you know. 
because everybody know the stuff they do. That you don't want other people to know you do. But you do stuff because of your sin nature. But he came into the world, watch this, as a perfect human being. And so he had to be born by way of a virgin birth so that the sin nature would not be transferred to him by way of the male heredity. So in the process of meiosis, Mary's egg threw off all of the maleness. And she was overshadowed by the Holy Spirit. And God provided the other 23 chromosomes that needed to make the 46 chromosomes for, so Jesus could come out a perfect person that was completely human and completely divine all the same time. That's an essential of the good news. That, that's the first essential of the good news. And then there's not only his virgin birth, but his sinless life. Now, uh, the theologians call it the impeccability of Christ. He's, what is impeccability? It means that he was faultless. Impeccable. Now, now you and I are not impeccable. All of us are peckable. We be pecking up something. <laughs> Some of us were pecking this morning. Yeah. But, but he's impeccable, faultless, sinless life. 33 and a half years and never once sinned. You ever wonder why 33 and a half years? Now watch this. Jesus said, I came not to destroy the law of the prophets, but to fulfill. Now, now listen at this. It took 33 and a half years for Jesus in his perfect, sinless life to fulfill everything the law required of a person. L listen, I want you to get this. In his bodily human form, Jesus fulfilled, he, he satisfied every requirement that Moses and the prophets required. He, he satisfied every requirement. We can't hardly satisfy five Now, I'm including myself, you know, I probably can't satisfy three, but we, can, we, can, we just can't do it. And listen, don't, don't try. You can't. None of us can. If we could, we wouldn't need Jesus and he wouldn't need to go to the cross. But since we can't because of our sin natures, God sent his one and only son without a sin nature, born of a virgin, to live a sinless life and satisfy every requirement of the law so that he could die. Here it comes, a substitutionary death on the cross. That's the third essential, his substitutionary death. You say, how so? Because... He was our substitute. If you think back to the Old Testament uh, writings and the uh, sin offerings and, and, and all of the different Levitical offerings, and you read all that, you say, what is all that about? But you're, you'll read a consistent theme that 
whatever was offered, whether it was a goat or a ram or a bullock or whatever it was, it had to be spotless. It, it, it had to be without flaw. You know, you, you, you couldn't bring, you know, a, a hippity hop goat. You know, something the goat hit well, three of his legs, you know, and one a little short. So he, he you, can't, you can't bring that. You, can, you can't bring one that's blind in one eye. You know, he always walking to the right side because he can't see on the left. You, 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 you can't do that. You, and, and some people would try to get away. This is, see, this is what they thought of their God. Uh, they would want to keep the best for themselves and bring something flawed and give it to God. And you know what that equates to? Well, we want to keep what belongs to God for ourselves and bring him some kind of substitute offering. No, bring him the tenth. Bring him the tithe. Why? Because it belongs to him. You don't bring him no hippity hop goat. Are you still with me? His substitutionary death he had to be the perfect sacrifice. And it could only be him. Why? Because of his virgin birth. Because of his sinless life. He could become our substitute. And watch this. Die in our place. Therefore his death was vicarious. It was a substitutionary, vicarious death. Substitutionary in that he died in our place. Vicarious in that we didn't die, but we benefited from him dying. Listen at me, the best kind of learning is vicarious. You know, when the old folk say, well, baby, I wouldn't do that. I, I, I did that, you know. Uh, I've been there and done that, so forth. You know, and sometimes you want to say, well, you get sick of the old folk telling you how to live. No, they're, they're trying to give you something vicariously. Yeah. I, would, I wouldn't buy that, you know. Why? Because they already bought it. They know what's going to happen. And so they're trying to allow you to benefit from something they suffered through. Oh, I wish I had a church today. And you know, the, 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 the young ladies who are real smart, they, you know what they'll do? When they have a young man that they're you know, thinking that he might be marriage material, if they have a matriarch in the family, they'll say, well, you gotta come and meet my grandmama and say, granny, this is John or, or Bubba or Sugar, whoever he is, and I like him. And, and, and grandma will say, yeah, baby, how you doing? And, and then they'll come back later without him. Big Mama, how do you like it? Big Mama say, well, baby. And when she started out saying, well, baby. She, you know what's coming? It's best you leave him alone. Not just his virgin birth, sinless life and substitutionary death that would not be anything without his bodily resurrection and listen put an adjective there put an adjective his bodily resurrection his body got up out of the grave Jesus got up with a resurrected body out of the grave and walked out of the grave and the folk came back there you know to finish embalming him and the angel was there saying why seek ye the living in the place of the dead why, why, why are you looking for a live man in a graveyard he is not here he is risen come see the place where he laid he's risen from the grave 
Therefore, we are, when we will believe, watch this, when we believe, when we receive him as Savior, we are buried with him. So that we will also be raised with the same likeness of him. I have an expectation that if the rapture doesn't happen before I die, when I die, it just means I'm going to beat you to Jesus. For the dead in Christ shall rise. And those of us, you know, who are alive and remain, that that second shall be caught up. But I already be there. Listen, listen, with a resurrected body. Better than this one. No high blood. No diabetes. No high cholesterol. No whatever else the doctor's looking for. There just won't be none of that. Think about it. You can walk around heaven all day, every day. Listen, listen to me. Walk around heaven all day, every day. You won't find a single hospital. <laughs> here, listen, here we walk by faith, not by sight. But there we'll walk by sight yes, and not by faith. <laughs> you, 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 you'll catch that when you get home. It's, it's going to minister to you when you get home. You'll be in the back room somewhere and get start shouting. Yes. When you're sharing the essentials of the good news, the virgin birth, sinless life, substitutionary, vicarious death, bodily resurrection, be sure you end with his imminent return. Why stand ye here gazing in the air? Why, why are you looking up in the clouds? This same Jesus who ascended up on high he, he's, he's coming back again he's, he, for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout and a voice of the archangel and the trumpet of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first in a moment in the twinkling of an eye for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed He's coming back in the air. He's coming back in the air. He's coming back in the air. When, when he comes back for the church, he will not touch the earth. He will come in the air and the church will meet him in the clouds. But seven years later, he will come back with the church and he will set foot on the Mount of Olives and it will split in half. But there's an imminence about his return. So Paul asked the church to pray for him. His return is, is imminent, it, meaning there's no prophecy that needs to be fulfilled. There's no sign that has to happen. Nothing of that type. Not, matter of fact, he could come today. That, that, that's why uh, they use the word imminent because it, it's, it's close by. It, it, it's imminent. It, it's at hand. It's imminent. It's very near. It's imminent. It could happen any time. It's imminent. In a moment, it could, it could, it could just jump off it in, 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 in a moment, in, in the twinkling. Do you know how fast your eye twinkles? It's, it's, it's because it's imminent it's also urgent 
his imminent return places an urgency on the message. You know, some of my, my relatives, you know, after I had, you know, the incident in the airport and I had to be carried to the emergency room and all that, some of the relatives, my relatives, say, nah, Stanley, you know, you don't, you don't have to do all this. You, you, you've done enough. You, you can slow down now. Let somebody else do all that stuff. You don't, you don't have to, don't, you know, in other words, like, you need to protect yourself, man. You need to, you need to get out of this. And you know what? I can't do it. I can't, I, can't, I can't do it. I can't do it. You know, you know why I can't do it? Because of his imminent return. There's an urgency on the message. You know, so as, as God opens the door, uh, I, I'll go back. Hey, hallelujah. Uh, why, why, because it's my calling. It's, it's, and, and listen, we, we are told, we are told that we must make our calling and election sure. Listen, listen, listen. There's an urgency. People are dying and, and they are being eternally lost without Christ and so I'm just saying, don't be surprised when we do another commissioning prayer pastor be right down yeah. <laughs> until the Lord say different now I appreciate the relatives I appreciate their concern about me I'm glad somebody is but to the Lord say different. Listen, listen to what Paul said. And listen, this is a different letter. I'm closing now in case anybody wanted to shout. This is good preaching. You know. <laughs> this is a different letter. Not Ephesians. But we go over to the Colossian letter. Chapter 4. Same preacher, Paul. And, and, and he's asking again for prayer and I'm asking you to pray for me listen to what he said at the same time pray also for us that God may open to us a door for the word yeah. Yeah. Can, I, can I stop there and tell you that God opened a door for the word for us here at New Covenant at Dr. N.H. Jones Elementary School, God opened a door there. God, God opened a door in our community. He, he opened a door across the state and in our nation. He, he opened a door in, in, in St. Mark, Haiti and in, in Gonaives and Patientville and, and Gonaav or whatever. The, all kind of different places. I mean, we've been some everywhere. Over there in 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 Katali, Kenya, and Karatina. God, watch this. God opened a door for the world. What now what we gonna do? Well, you know, it, it might be dangerous. It's dangerous here. I was coming into the church this week. I believe it was Thursday morning. Stopped to the traffic light, it was red. I stopped to the traffic light, there was a car on the lane, it lane beside me, a car pulled up, guy opened the door, took his, his soda and threw it and, and hit the car in front of them and the guys got out and started cussing and fussing and walking up on each other and I'm sitting there looking. That's just... I was telling Sister Jacob, she said, well, you should have ran the red, red light. I said, I said, no, no, I, I didn't run the red light. I, I said, I have my permit. <laughs> Good.
He said, pray that God may open a door for us. You know what will happen? If we stop going through the doors God opens for us, God will stop opening the doors and we will slowly dry up right here on this corner trying to get all we can, can all we get, and sit on the can. Pray for us that God will, watch this, to declare the mystery of Christ on account of which I am in prison that I may make it clear which is how I ought to speak. And then finally, same preacher this classical text and I'm with him Romans 1 16 he said for I'm not ashamed of this good news about Christ it is the power of God at work saving everyone who believes the Jew first and also the Gentile so let's keep proclaiming it let's keep stating it clearly Let's keep praying that God will open doors for new covenant for the word. Let's keep praying that there will always be people at new covenant who want to walk through those doors and clearly proclaim the message, the good news that Christ died for everyone. Maybe you're here today having heard the good news of the gospel. Maybe you want to respond. You can respond if you have never received Christ as Savior. You can receive him today. We have counselors who will help you to make that decision. Uh, maybe you're here. You've received Christ as your Savior but you're not connected to a local church, a place where the gifts and abilities he poured into you when he saved you can overflow in ministry to others. And if that's you as we stand, will you walk forward? Will you walk forward? Will you come today? Will you come? Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Just now. Just now. Come.